roles of the transport layer. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the transport layer. I've mentioned it in passing. I've uh, offered some common ports that are used by the transport layer. But let's talk a bit more about uh, what the transport layer actually does for us. Uh, it's a very important layer, and it uh, its main duty is to determine what applications uh, are sending and receiving data when you're transferring it across the network. And it does that through the use of these ports that we've been discussing. Uh, so what are some things that it does? It provides the segmentation that we've seen. So if we have a chunk of data, it will take that and slice it up into pieces called segments. Those are your protocol data units for that layer. And then each one of those segments will then go down to the lower layers to receive additional information, such as header information for IP addresses and things like that that we'll talk about. Uh, it also reassembles the data when it gets received at the other end. So once this gets to the other side, it'll receive a piece, and then it'll receive another piece, and it'll keep receiving additional pieces as they come in, as they are received from the lower layers, and it will rebuild that piece of data. And then once that piece of data is finished, it'll then send it up to the application layer. Uh, it can also do that if uh, item if pieces are received out of order so let's say uh, we have some routers here that's a terrible router <laughs> if we have some routers here um, we'll have we'll make like five and so let's say these are interconnected got a whole bunch of WAN links here. And this is something we could potentially build in the later videos, but let's say we have a piece of data coming. Uh, one of these segments goes down its uh, layers, gets additional information sent, uh, attached to it, it gets encapsulated as it goes down, hits the wire, uh, and then comes across, gets into this router. It could then potentially take any of these paths, and that's when we start talking about routing protocols and static routes and dynamic routing protocols and such and uh, why packets uh, or frames may decide to go one direction or another. Uh, so you could potentially have the first segment go this way until it gets to its destination and then you could have another one come into this router and then it could go this way. and it may receive them out of order so you know the first one was the green one this was the blue one and then this was the green one the green one was received after the blue one so it, it was uh, it was delayed because it had to take a longer route uh, the transport layer will determine that that's out of order and it will properly order them then so that it gets reassembled correctly and then sent up to the application layer so that's how the whole packet switching network works, uh, it's partly because of the transport layer. It is, has the intelligence to uh, properly reassemble things when it gets to the other side. Uh, it also allows for flow control, so if, uh, if things get congested uh, within the software, it, it can also say, you know, hey, we need to slow down. Uh, we'll see some of that when we look at Wireshark. Uh, you'll see where that is. Uh, so you, it'll determine whether or not you know we can speed up our communications. We need to slow down our communications. Um, the two endpoints will always communicate and let each other know you know what what speed they can handle so that they don't lose any data by just talking too fast or you know filling up a, the bandwidth or something like that. Uh, it also provides reliability. I'll put that on here. As I mentioned, we have TCP and UDP when we're talking about the uh, transport layer for the TCP IP stack. Uh, it provides reliability. Or none. No reliability. So the TCP layer offers uh, in the TCP IP stack it offers the reliability. So 
let's say this green uh, this green segment made its way across but then over here it died and it didn't make it all the way T the TCP functionality in the transport layer when you're using TCP IP will say hey that needs to be resent uh, so it'll then send it again and make sure it gets to where it needs to go uh, or if something is received and it's corrupt uh, there's when it gets encapsulated there's uh, checksums and CRC values at, at the end where it says uh, kinda like a hash value when we talk about hashing coming up it will do a little it'll turn it through the meat grinder and come up with some sort of value and it says this this segment uh, equals this value if you receive it and it is not this value when you run it through your meat grinder well then it's been corrupted you need to send it again it also handles that so it'll handle uh, you know loss of data uh, corrupt data it'll make sure it gets resent but if you're using UDP for example it won't do that so that'll be up to the application that's handling that UDP traffic whether or not it does that like I mentioned with TFTP it can it can have it has that functionality to make sure that the files that you're sending and receiving with TFTP are correct and they're not corrupt but it doesn't use that at the transport layer it doesn't it's not part of UDP uh, so there's pros and cons of both but um, usually you'll see TCP used for things that aren't um, uh, speed dependent and then you'll see UDP used for things that are speed dependent like voice traffic or video traffic or something like that uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, let's talk a little bit about port numbers so I've, I've referred to some of the common port numbers but you know they were kind of all over the place with what the numbers really were uh, so what we'll do is we'll make a new layer here and we have some categories of, of numbers these are assigned by the uh, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority so IANA they are also very important when it comes to IP addresses when we start talking about the network layer uh, they handle the assignment of the blocks of IP addresses that we receive from our internet providers uh, and we'll talk about some of the issues related to that coming up but they also handle the ports so we have well-known ports we have registered ports and then we have the dynamic ports or private you could also call them private ports and these guys whoops So the well-known ports are the ports that are well well known. They're they're older. They've been around for quite a while. Uh, a lot of the ones that I mentioned before, they fell into this range. So the well-known ports are from zero to 1023. Uh, so that encompasses most of the ones I uh, I mentioned. So we have port 80 for HTTP, 443 for SSL. We have 21 for FTP. We have uh, you know 69 for TFTP 161 and 162 for SNMP. These all fall into this well-known ports. They're they're very old and well-known uh, protocols that are assigned these ports. Um, they're very controlled by IANA. Most likely, you'll you won't see new ones crop up in there. Uh, one of the famous ones is there's one uh, called for 666. It was for Doom back in the day. Uh, it's no longer used to my knowledge, but um, back when the internet was new they were assigning IP addresses and port numbers kind of willy-nilly to anyone who asked because they didn't expect it to grow to such a size that it has today so you'll see things like that and uh, especially companies will even have ports assigned to them they'll have large blocks of IP addresses assigned to them that today seem silly and and but back then it, it was okay because there were only you know a few thousand companies on the internet at the time and you know only a few products so it wasn't a big deal uh, but if you go and look at that the IANA list is, is quite interesting uh, just do a Google for the IANA uh, port list we'll, we'll do that
and you'll have a list of common ports and then there's pages of these here there's other formats too I think there's like an ASCII yeah there's plain text formats and stuff like that and you can go through and look and let me see if I can find that Doom one just for fun there we go Doom ID software 666 <laughs> Uh, and then there's a, there's a lot of other ones in here that have been deprecated over the years. They aren't no longer used. Um, and then a lot of them, you know, lower in the range around the 100 and below, we use those every day. They're super common uh, services and that we use and uh, protocols that we use every day. Uh, so feel free to take a look at that list and uh, learn some of those. NTP, that's also a very common one. Uh, network time protocol. Uh, we also have the registered ports, whoops, which are uh, common, like for games sometimes, or common applications. A lot of those get, uh, when they apply to IANA, they'll get stuck in the registered port range if they get approved. So no longer do they really hand out the well-known port range. That's Those are pretty, they're all filled up. But that's from 1024 up to uh, 49, what is it, uh, 151. So if you create an application and you apply to IANA to get your own port number, there's a chance it will fall into here somewhere. You might take over someone else's existing port that's been deprecated, but uh, they, they get uh, applied in here usually. Uh, we also have the dynamic ports, which is kind of like the Wild West in a way. Um, they're also known as ephemeral ports. Uh, it's a free-for-all essentially. So uh, a lot of times, like I mentioned, um, if you're setting up a web server and uh, port 80 is, is used sometimes it's 8080 or something with an 8 so it can, if you use something up into this range then it's safe to use because no one else is going to be using it or they're not registered to use it at least so you have a greater possibility of not stepping on somebody else's toes essentially so these are 49152 up to the maximum which is 65535 So anything in there, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, it's the wild west of ports. <laughs> um, you can that could be UDP, and any of these port numbers can be UDP or TCP or both. So you might have seen that when we were scrolling through the analyst. Um, some of them, you know, like uh, DNS, that'll be TCP and UDP on the same port number. Uh, it's it's common to see that, uh, but sometimes it's only one or the other. Uh, so feel free to use anything in this uh, dynamic or private port range uh, if you're creating an application or something like that. A lot of video games also go over this. Um, custom applications usually <laughs> will go into this range as well uh, since it's free to use. Uh, oh, and uh, I mentioned with uh, the DNS, the TCP UDP. Uh, so that's something we already went over, but just to reiterate with the whole uh, well-known ports and uh, TCP UDP type uh, reuse. Uh, for example, with that one, you have 53 being used for DNS, uh, which is up in our well-known port range, but it's UDP and TCP. But then sometimes you'll have ones like um, 80, which is TCP. Or then sometimes you'll have ones like SNMP, which is uh, 161, for example, UDP or 162. Uh, so you'll, you can have a mix of that. So just take a look at that. Uh, so from here, we're going to go, since I've been mentioning TCP and UDP a lot, we're going to go into more of uh, TCP and UDP protocols and kind of what how TCP does its um, reliability negotiation and, and ensuring that data is uh, correct when it gets to the other side and no uh, segments are lost and uh, the difference between that and UDP and how the, the headers are larger or smaller depending.